regarding glycogen stores. Are the glycogen stores found in muscles used only locally in the muscles in which they are actually stored? Or is it that glycogen is available to whatever muscles require it? And then his, he follows up, he says, if glycogen is available throughout your whole body, then would an increase in muscle mass be helpful in increasing your available glycogen? I.e., if I gain muscle mass in my upper body, will that help sustain me through a longer effort due to the increased glycogen storage capacity? So that's a, a, a awesome question, a really good one. Uh, where, where do we want to start with this? Uh, chat? Um, <clears throat> let me address that first question and then it'll kind of bleed into the second question. So in answering are glycogen stores found in the muscles only used locally or in the muscles in which they're actually stored or is the glycogen available elsewhere? Um, it's, it's both kind of. So we have two main storage sites in the body for glycogen, uh, the liver and the muscles. The, there are smaller amounts, much smaller amounts stored in the kidneys and the glial cells in your brain, your red and white blood cells, and during pregnancy in the uterus. But for the most part, when we talk glycogen, we're talking about the liver and the muscles. From the liver, it's a, it's a diminutive amount by comparison to what we can store in the muscles. So we're looking at, you know, for an average size adult, and I think they pin that at somewhere like 150 pounds or what would that be like 70 kilograms-ish you're looking at 100, maybe 120 grams. And this is free to circulate. It, it can go anywhere. Largely, it goes to the brain because the brain is a huge glucose hog. I mean, per cell, the brain uses a lot of sugar. Um, in the muscle, however, we can store a heck of a lot more. And um, in an average human, again, someone who's probably deconditioned or sedentary, four or 500 uh, grams of glycogen in the muscle itself. This is something, as I've talked about in the past, as we've talked about here on the podcast, is with training, also with diet, even things like your basal metabolic rate, they can all influence this level of storage. So it's very trainable. It, it adapts to, to training stress like a lot of other things do. Um, glycogen itself is stored in the cytosol. That's just the, the, the liquid component or the intracellular fluid inside the cell. So we're actually talking in the cell, not in the mitochondria. So all the other organelles floating around in the cell, uh, glycogen's in there as well. And basically it's just, it's just chains of glucose. So you just link a bunch of glucose together somewhere in the ballpark of like you know, 10, 12 glucose molecules and you got glycogen. Um, were you to dry it out, it'd be a white powder. So if you can think of that, just kind of floating around dissolved in the cells fluid, that's what we're talking about. But within the muscle cells themselves, mu muscles lack a enzyme called glucose six phosphatase. So that translates to there's no free glucose when it comes to, to, to muscle glycogen. So this, this particular enzyme breaks glucose down into what's a form of glucose called glucose 6-phosphate. And this is what's used in glycolysis, you know, to fuel cell activity, to create ATP, to drive muscle contraction, et cetera. And the pentose phosphate pathway, if you're familiar with that sort of thing. So basically once the glycogen or the glucose is stored in the muscle in the form of glycogen, that's where it stays. That's where it's utilized. There is some small, there are some small exceptions. Um, first of which, when we, can't keep up with the, the, the pyruvate that's coming, or the, 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 the mitochond mitochondria can't keep up with the, basically the glucose is coming in, that pyruvate rather than entering the mitochondria becomes lactate. So we all know about lactate, where's lactate go? It can be shuttled to other muscle cells nearby. So, so there's a couple forms of shuttling, in which case great lactate is reconverted into pyruvate back in the mitochondria, we're good to go. But a lot of that lactate, when there's an excess, spills into the bloodstream. And this is how we can measure blood lactate because it's actually in the blood. Once it's in the blood, it can make its way through the circulatory system all the way back around to the liver and undergo something called gluconeogenesis. And this is uh, one, pro one part of that process is the Cori cycle, or actually those two might be synonymous, I don't think so. Um, in any case, the, this lactate spills back into the liver, the liver transfers or uh, converts it back into glucose and pushes it back out into the bloodstream, which means it's again free glucose. So in that case, glycogen did make its way out of the muscle into the bloodstream, back to the liver, back to the bloodstream, and can be redistributed somewhere else. So yeah, that's kind of a workaround, but it's, it's not a tremendously efficient one, as you can tell. It takes a bit of time. So with all of this in mind, if you did increase your lower body mass, yes, you can increase your glycogen storage. You have more muscle mass, therefore you can pack away more glycogen within that muscle. And then as I mentioned earlier, if you train the muscle, via endurance training, it, it, same thing. It packs more glycogen into, into the muscle so that you can do 
more endurance work later. When it comes to the upper body, however, pretty unlikely that that's going to benefit you as a cyclist because basically you have to liberate that glucose, create, you know, just go through that whole cycle that I just talked about to get it back into the bloodstream to move it to the lower body. So it's not likely it's going to benefit the rest of the body, especially if you're not utilizing that muscle mass. If you're just sitting on a bike, you're not going to be working those upper body muscles to a point where they're going to generate excess lactate that's going to you know, further itself to the point of the Cori cycle and get the glucose back to the actual working muscles. It's not likely. So in the case of like an XC skier, a cross country skier, or someone who's using a lot of upper body movement, or maybe even, and probably not, it's a bit of a stretch, but a cyclist who rides really sloppily or maybe over really technical <laughs> terrain, there could be enough upper body movement to generate lactate to, you know, further that cycle and get it back to the, the leg muscles, but unlikely. So we should do curls. While we ride, for sure. <laughs> Lots of curls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the spin bike dance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Turns out They're it's a little bit science. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I guess to, to recap, it's part systemic, part local uh, to a certain degree, Chad. But in terms of yeah. just adding muscle mass with the intent that, you know, elsewhere on your body, basically, hoping that that would be utilize, you need to be working that to a certain point so that it can actually liberate that glucose and utilize it in the process. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a good way to put it. I mean, part of it's systemic, there's your liver and part of it's local and that's, that's muscular. Cool. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's awesome. I, in, in my mind, I have so many, like, uh, so many, I don't know if you guys have this too. So many like metaphors, uh, in, in, in ones that I can understand where I can kind of break down and understand the mechanical nature of what, how everything works in, in our body and that's a cool one. That's pretty easy to, to think about too. So thanks, Chad. If you like this video, you should subscribe to our channel. Maybe even give this video a like with a thumbs up and a comment down below. If you want to see race analysis videos, you can click on it right over here. And if you want to get your coaching questions answered, you can click on it right over here. And if you want to become a faster cyclist, which you should, you should go over to trainerroad.com. It'll make you faster. We promise. We guarantee it, right, Nate? Guaranteed. <laughs> or your money back. Yes, it's true. Actually, we, we really will do that. Yeah.